now you're glowing like God. You've got like a stream of light in your face. All right, what's up, everybody? We're doing another episode of Hillsboro and Hunter and Will with my very good friend and Devin's very good friend, Yvonne King. So I've known Yvonne since 2006. I believe that's when I started teaching over there. And she was already a teacher at that school. Uh, you guys were only open for a year before I came, right? Uh, yes, 2002 is when we opened. Um, 2005. Yes, you were there a year. And then I started teaching and we became good friends. And then, you know, the friendship grew out of that. And her and Devin became really great friends. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to have YT. So she's still teaching right now. You're teaching third grade. Third grade. Right, third grade over at Milltown and Bridgewater. But she's really getting into some other cool stuff. And she's kind of uh, following her path, you know, and, and not just uh, staying complacent. Right. So. YT lives in Hillsboro with her husband, Joe. So I used to teach with Joe as well. And, uh, is that, so Joe's still over there too. Yep. And why don't we just get started with YT? Kind of just tell us some of the, some of the this, this new passion. I wouldn't say new, but this, this passion that you've been working on. Yeah. And tell us some of the things you're doing with that. And I'll, I'll ask you questions based off of that. Like, what are you learning about right now? What are you, what are you kind of specifically? Yeah, it's like a revived passion, right? I've always been curious and wondering about things like spirituality and cultures and rituals and things that just help you find inner peace and balance within yourself and have, when you're at that level, you can have a better relationship with others you know not only with yourself but with others too so i'm always looking for that aspect too like how to make everyone happy everyone needs to be and deserves to be um peaceful and understand that sometimes things aren't that serious and sometimes you really do need to look within slow things down and just like appreciate what you have yeah yeah and you 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 know you've always been really good at helping people realize that you know just through talking with them so I think when you combine that with, for example, like Reiki. Yeah. You know, for people that, first of all, don't know what Reiki, people have heard of it, but I think a lot of people don't know exactly what it is. So kind of tell us what Reiki is. Yeah. Master. Now, so, and tell, I want to know about what was the process to get to that level. So for me, my Reiki adventure, I guess, started about two, three years ago. Um, I was suffering, I'm suffering from autoimmune disease. So I was reaching out to doctors and that kind of wasn't leading me to any answers that was fulfilling for me. It didn't make sense to kind of just keep adding on like medications and all these like things. So I thought again, look within, right? So did some research, found a really cool center in Branchburg that offered Reiki sessions and it actually is essential wellness, which is five minutes from Milltown School. So I went there, checked it out. I got a couple sessions and they were really magical for me. So Reiki, sorry, is actually the universal life energy, using that to restore or rebalance an imbalance in my own body. Um, it helps you tune into yourself. It kind of brings awareness just of being, right? Again, that whole thought of slowing down and taking care of yourself. Uh, during my sessions there, they were pretty powerful. Um, I experienced and felt things that I never thought I would. I definitely felt... And I know some people may not believe or think it's a little silly, but other beings in the room, like I felt like my grandmother was there with me. Um, just really good moments, right, for yourself. Um, yeah. So uh, continued with that, did a bunch more sessions and then found out they offered classes. Uh, my teacher, her name is Beth Wishbo. She was a Ma Reiki master teacher. So I signed up for Reiki one and two. That was last April, April 2019. And then I became a Reiki master this this past spring. Oh no, uh, can't remember when. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so that basically empowered me and just opened my world, right? The world of possibility, the world of just again like finding other ways to balance what it was unbalanced. Because they say like disease is disease, like your body, is, something's missing, right? So we take the energies from all around us, nature, yourself, the people around you, and you harness it and you bring your vibration up, right? Mm -hmm. The goal is to live a happy life with a vibration that is higher, the highest vibration. Sure. Um, 
And some people say Reiki is also equal to love. And I know you know that love is the highest of all, right? Yeah. So to be able to help others feel that love for themselves and then transfer that love for yourself to others is basically the goal, right? Yeah. So you went, that was cool. So you started taking it, liked it, took action. Mm -hmm. People not with Reiki, because I want to make, take anything, right? If the, if the student isn't ready to lesson, the teacher's not going to appear. So people that kind of write it off, and I did that before, well, years ago, before I started learning, you know, way before, I'm talking like 10, 12 years ago, before you become open that there's all this energy out there that we can't see. You know, I think people get so caught up in the five senses. Mm -hmm. so with Reiki, is it you transferring energy? Is it you pulling energy out? Is it, is it like, how does that work? So when you're uh, performing Reiki, you're basically using your body as like a, like a channel, kind of like if there was like a straw that goes right through me. So I'm pulling the energy from source or the earth and through me and through my hands, my hand chakras onto you. Okay. So I'm not giving you my energy. I'm just that middle person, right? Kind of like your guide okay. right, to help you find that or fill that piece that's missing. So it's based in the chakras? Yep. Yep, your hand chakra is another hand chakra is extension of your heart chakra. Okay. So that's and pretty cool. For people that don't know, chakras is is there seven of them? Am I correct yeah. with that? Seven. Yep. And like you had the heart, you got you got the hands, but the chakras are, are, are what are they? The energy centers in the body? It runs straight through. So you have your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, your um, sacral sacrum and the root okay. so all those kind of help connect so you think of it like um i guess like one of those water things like if you have those axles you know how they all turn together like they kind of if you drip water down it kind of trickles all down so you want to make sure everything's always flowing in flow right everything's moving everything's flowing but sometimes there's something stuck yeah. reiki would just send some extra energy to make it unstuck but the right. so energy flow balance. yeah energy. better flow regard is it kind of the same it's not obviously the same discipline but is it kind of going down the same path as like acupuncture is that i mean i know that works meridians. acupuncture use meridians so there's different meridians along your body kind of like pressure points and so they would also the same thing the same thought would be to unlock something that's blocked okay they would use but their tool instead of the palm chakras would be a needle okay so the needle would be at like precise points but the same thing is to unblock anything that might be stacked okay. Or it needs to be fixed. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Reiki. And, and I love I acupuncture too. I didn't, I did, I pretty much, yeah, love, I went to acupuncture years ago. Um, I had Bell's palsy back in 2007. So my whole like side of my face was paralyzed. So I had like 23 needles in my face. Went okay. every other day for about a month, mixed with herbal tonics to drink. So. And what were the results? Um, about like 95%. <laughs> Yeah, you can't see it now, now but like, how long did that take? But I know it's there. Yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah, I couldn't even blink my eye. I couldn't blink an eye, and my whole side of my mouth wasn't closed. I had to sleep with an eye patch so my eye wouldn't dry out. Wow. Yeah. So it's cool. I'm kind of, that was 2007, so 13 years ago. Yeah. You know, stuff like that sticks with you, and then, you know, it gets planted in people, like in this case, your head that, hey, I can help people with you know, whether that's Eastern medicine or whatnot. So you yeah. take Reiki and now you're almost done with uh, your massage life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you're I've added more, more modalities, you know, Reiki was one, sound healing is another with my drumming and now massage therapy. So kind of my little. People will enter through different doorways, you know, whatever to, for your, your guidance or your help. So with massage, when did you decide that you wanted to become licensed in that? And what's that journey look like? Like, tell us about school, what's going on there? Uh, massage, I think that was another thing that kind of, that had more of that fear component to it just because I had more of that time. Like I had to invest the time to travel to the class, to study the subjects and to have the ability to have that section. Cause I'm also, you know, I was still, I'm still a teacher. So I still have other things going on and, I just gave myself these roadblocks like, nah, can't do it. Can't do it. It's also kind of expensive. So, but 
honestly, with conversating with you and Devin and just having those people around me that were like, no, this like seems really natural. Like anyone I talked to about it were like, no, that kind of makes sense. Like I could totally see you doing this. And I've had some people over. And um, so I signed up in February and started two weeks before everything got shut down. <laughs> so again, another hurdle, but it actually gave me a really good opportunity to kind of buckle down and this is what I wanted. So I did what I needed to do and it worked out really well because we had the Zoom stuff. So I was still able to take the anatomy courses. Um, it's a really wonderful group of people. It's over at Westfield, TM, the master, uh, massage therapy. Oh my gosh, I forgot that. What is over <laughs> the massage training center. Sorry guys, in Westfield. That's where um, you're getting certified. That's where you're getting your license. My classes now, yeah. Okay, cool. So, it's been really, really eye-opening and enlightening just to know also to be able to, like my whole goal right now is to continue my own healing journey and then help others heal along the way. Yeah. Um, just showing them that. Yeah. And I think you're doing it, uh, it's a natural progression where a lot of times we can heal ourselves through teaching, you know, guiding others. Because I, I always found right when we teach, whether it's actually teaching like you're teaching at school, teaching, whatever it is, right? The subject matter, you're, you're learning about it. Every, I guarantee you every time, right, that you do Reiki or massage, you learn something new. Oh, yeah. That's the best part. I love learning. <laughs> yeah, and then you find, you connect some dots. Yeah. You're going to process. You know, and I always tell people, I think we went over this one day, but something Matt Fury had taught me was you go from warrior, you're a warrior, mm -hmm. you're to the healer. So you're progressing to that path to, to healer, right? Where, you know, for Reiki, for example, you can place your hand somewhere. Yeah. With somebody. So, yeah. Like, with Reiki, if somebody is completely blocked off to the, this invisible energy, right? Even though there's invisible energy all around us, I mean, radio, infrared, visible, there's all this stuff, ultraviolet. So they acknowledge it, but then when it comes to their body, for some reason, they, they've been taught, you know, Western medicine that, oh, no, it's just a pill I got to take. Yeah, shut it down. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. It's a, right. well, it's that same thing. When I had Bell's palsy, I thought I had a stroke. Like I woke up, couldn't feel my tongue, couldn't move my face, I went to the emergency room, and they thought I had Lyme's disease. They had all these like thoughts, and everything was just like, oh, just like give her uh, like a label, right? And then they weren't really doing anything to help me. Wow. They had no idea. They honestly had no idea. They just asked me a thousand questions and then sent me home and then take these, take that. And then my mom, so she's always been really into, you know, our, the way herbal medicine and acupuncture and just like different, you know, what she grew up knowing to how to heal ourselves. So she found me the doctor and we went to his house and he was awesome. So now, with you, so for people that don't know, you, you're Chinese. Chinese. You were born here. Born here. Your parents were born there. Yep. Okay. So you are, so they are obviously very open and, and get their medicine. Mm hmm They understand the power of it. Well, I think like you're saying, people here. Yeah. yeah. I know. They always have, my mom's had little bottles of powdery, mysterious powdery substances. If they had an ache or pain, you like get a, a ginger root, you cut it open, you like put it in with the water, you make your own little like sticky paste and you like apply it to whatever was bothering you. We have always had these things growing up. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, growing up, but trying to like fit in, right? Like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, that smells funny. Oh, that tastes weird. Like, like I honestly blocked it out for a little bit too, but that was always something that was really always a driving force behind, like in my head or in my heart, just kind of things that I always liked and loved and knew it worked, but had to give it yeah. its, you know, chance. Yeah, you got to give it a chance. You got to be open to it and, and not really care what other people think. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you're at, you've, you've obviously come to that following your spirit you know where spirits kind of guiding you circle yeah which is awesome now with because i know my first exposure to the, the the drums shamanic healing yeah was with you so i don't even know that much about it but tell people what that's about like the drum you know tell them about that the idea the concept behind it so um my first drumming experience was at again the essential wellness center they on uh, every first sunday of the month they used to have what they call reiki share celebrations which is an opportunity for anyone to come on in um to get a free 10 minute reiki session to do it's about three or four hours long you can sit and meditate in their open room 
Um, it was a really just an awesome, just walking into that space with all those higher vibrations, the crystal bowls were playing. Um, we had a bunch of Reiki practitioners there. Beth was there and just that whole experience, she would lead a meditation, guided meditation, and she would drum for us through it for about 20, 30 minutes. And that was like the, it was so cool. And I always wish I could bring you. Um, unfortunately, they're not doing things now with everything going on. So my intention is to bring that to no strength, that opportunity, that shared experience, bringing people together, raising our vibrations. The drum is basically uh, one of the most primitive forms of music, right? And it's supposed to connect to your heart. So you hear the drum beat, it changes your heart rate, right? Slows it down or speeds it up, whatever you need. And it helps you kind of just relax and release. So then your spirit or your energy body can just travel and go where it needs to be. So if you have a question or a problem that's been bothering you and you want to give you that moment of clarity and like peace and just like be able to see what you need to do, to feel what you need to do, just to kind of give you that opportunity to again connect with yourself. So that heartbeat is like your heart. It's just guiding you through and it gives you that opportunity just to kind of like let go, right? Let go of all the stuff that's around you, all the things that you think you have to do or want, you know, all the things that hold you down. Yeah. It frees you, so. It is, it's, it's, uh, it's cool to experience because uh, you do it at the end of our massage sessions and mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, maybe it was two weeks ago, but I was like almost going into like a sleep, but I wasn't sleeping. But I remember you said I twitched a few times. It gets you very uh, relaxed. Yeah, where it plays with your brain waves too, that brings you to the alpha waves, right? Relax and peacefulness and kind of help you set. Yeah. You're just kind of do everything, get that vibrational energy where it should be. Yeah. And with that, like as when people say that that aren't open to that, that this the simple way I explain that to them is when you listen to music, your energy is affected. Yep. No Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you got your picture, the the music that you work out to. Yeah. Right? The music that you relax to, songs that remind you of memories, like you know, first dances or. Yeah. It's a, it's a natural form of the way we communicate emotionally and then spiritually. Yeah, yeah. people just kind of categorize it. Oh, it's gotta be just like music with words and stuff like that. But no, music is a rhythm. Music yeah. is even just breathing, that's a rhythm, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's awesome that you're putting this together. So what do you, well, let's talk about Thursday first because I want yeah. you know, people to uh, know that the invitation is there. We, we, you know, this is, Yvonne's gonna be doing workshops at Neural Strength monthly workshops and we're going to kind of grow that so this thursday is the first one so give everybody like an idea of what we're going to be doing this thursday me and devin are going to be there yeah. uh, and my other buddies so kind of tell us what that's about okay so thursday is uh my restorative rituals first workshop um again my intention is to bring us all together when you walk in i'll be playing my crystal bowl you guys will have an opportunity to pick a space um bring a yoga mat or a blanket whatever to sit or lay down on uh, I thought to maybe have a conversation on compassion with everything happening around us, right? Compassion is very important. It's actually one of the most defining qualities that makes us human beings. It separates from other mammals. Compassion is what drives us to help each other. Because empathy is being able to see that someone's going through something, right? A tough situation, something harder, or something even exciting and happy. But compassion drives us to help, to get involved. And... I guess the focus, my hope would be to talk about how we can, it's obviously natural for us to get involved and help others, but to make sure you're helping yourself first too, so that self-compassion part. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then I will lead you through a, uh, a Reiki, um, a journey that Reiki practitioners use. So a guided meditation, and then I'll drum you through it. And then at the end, you guys can journal if you like afterwards we can share some experiences but again a nice opportunity to keep, bring yourself some more peace uh, bring a little bit of balance and harmony just a little a nice safe fun space to kind of yeah. be yeah I think i'm looking forward to it it's uh you know and people you know that the mind body spirit right they got to work on that fitness spiritual fitness mental fitness and i think now more than ever people need that so i'm excited to see you know for you to do that and then kind of grow it you know i think it's important now i think people need to give themselves that space that time and space right just yeah. connect with themselves and just yeah super important 
So I'll make sure that, that I put that in, in below this uh, video. Talk a little bit about, um, you don't have to go too in depth about, but like the, you got Devin really into the moons. You know, yeah, not that's our next workshop. So that's a sneak peek. <laughs> oh, okay. Our September workshop will be moon rituals. Yeah. Talk about the moon a little bit. Like what's, people think oh, it's a stupid rock in the sky, but it's not. Oh my gosh, more, way more powerful than that. So we think of, you think of the basic, everyone should know about ocean currents, right? It pulls, the moon pulls, tides go in and out. Our bodies are made of water primarily. It'll pull us in and out. So if we are open to it and willing to kind of, you know, think about ways and how nature affects us. And I know some of us, unfortunately, are shut out, right? We're put in a, in a cement building, in your cubicle, in your house, and you don't really go outside. I would definitely recommend placing your feet on the ground, feeling that earth underneath you and taking a moment like look at the moon at night it's beautiful and the moon actually works with us it can work with us in terms of the again the energy it produces the hope that it gives us so we have our, our new moon right a new moon ritual so that's when you would kind of plant your seeds like think about your wishes or hopes and dreams for this month so just focus on the month and we'll talk more about that in September but so you plant your seed new moon and it hopes to come into fruition for your full moon so you kind of like basically give yourself that opportunity again to reconnect with nature, right? Think about what's going on there. Because we're the only ones, again, the mammals, we don't, like humans, we don't interact with nature like everyone else does. Like all the plants and animals, they follow the moon, they follow the seasons, they follow everything. We don't follow that, or at least not a lot of us are, so. Yeah, we almost think we're separate. Yeah, but we're not. That's the most important part. We are, we are just like them, right? And hey. As, as you got Devin into that, like when we were on vacation, in Maine, the tides were extreme. It was not like the Jersey, like it was extreme, like 100, 200 feet difference between a couple hours every day. And I said, and I said, man, some people, if they just realize, step back, like you said, think about the ocean. It's the biggest force on earth, physical, and it takes up the most space. Mm -hmm. The moon is affecting the ocean every day, the ocean's energy. So, of course, it's affected. It's like common sense when you think about it like that. that Mm -hmm. Now, today, the new moon? New moon, yep. Talk about like full, like new moon. We won't go in, into all the different moons because I don't want to confuse people. But new moon, what? <laughs> all people's energy going to be typically like a new moon? Uh, energy levels are kind of like brewing and kind of and what my interpretation, right? So new moon always signals to me of like that hope and dream. So planting your seeds, everyone's like a little bit excited. So it could start to turn up, right? You're going to want to focus in on what you actually want to achieve, focus on what you want to bring to your life, all those things. And then you have to harness it. So as we travel through the next few weeks, next two weeks, two, three weeks, that harnessing that energy as it grows and grows. So it's kind of like the beginning of a very exciting time. So you can see. Like, you're like a... And well, c contrast that or maybe compare that too to the full moon. How would people's energy be there? Full moon is at its highest. And I know people always connect that, oh my God, my kids are crazy or dogs are going crazy. Like everyone's just like nuts. It's like full moon. And that's all they say about it. But that's like the potential, that fullest potential. So that is when you would see everything coming to fruition. Like if there's things to be released, that's when you also know if something didn't work out. Like say you have your new moon wish and you take a look by full moon, it hasn't quite got to where you want it to be. You either make the decision to let it go, it doesn't serve you, or to decide, wait, I looked at it at a wrong way. Like maybe try something different to achieve it. So that full moon is like their highest potential. Like is this is it time to like push it forward another step or is it time to let it go? And, and those are, there's basically a new moon and a full moon every month. Yeah. Yep. About every month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that would be, uh, well, be a cool workshop. I mean, that's something... Uh, yeah, that's another new fun thing for me to dive into. That's stuff into the Panda Challenge and, and you know, what people are looking to manifest in their life. So what do you, you know, I, I'll finish with some, some questions, just kind of visioning. In, let's say five years from now, where, like, where are you at? What's going on? How are you going to tie all, like, what is your vision with all this, these tools you're putting together? Five years from now, I, I hope to still, well, I will be discovering additional ancient rituals that have worked for civilizations and 
people all around just to harness that energy and to bring it to myself and to those around me. So whatever is out there, I kind of would love to, because even this past few months, few years, I've discovered so many amazing things that have brought so much peace and joy to my life. And I think I hope to continue that. I know it will. Yeah. Right? Just discovering more things. Yeah. I mean, at that point, right, five times, five years, you know, a lot could go on. Do you envision having like a, uh, not like a, like a facility almost, like a, a place where you practice this, where you imagine you're a solo practitioner? Like, what, what do you see there? Uh, I would love to have people join me. I mean, I already am a part of a wonderful community. I haven't got that far yet in terms of like a facility or what that looks like in the structural form, but definitely expanding. Oh, that's another thing I learned, right? Having more expanders in my life, people who bring me towards something that I didn't even know existed or didn't know would have such a powerful effect on my life. And so I think just expanding. Nice. I don't cool. want to limit it, so it's just going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, what are you, and I know you're big into reading now, what, what's your, when I ask you your favorite book, what comes to mind? So I don't really have favorites of anything. I know that because everyone like, you know, teacher thing. what's your favorite drink? What's your favorite color? What's your, but I know one of the, um, the first book I bought at a school book fair in, when I was in third grade was A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. So the poet, right? He's like a super weird guy. Let's just be honest, right? Very different, very just like, but that's what I think drew me to it. It was different. It wasn't like the, the poems and the stories I had in my classroom. I think I heard the name because we might've done one of his poems, but as I like flipped through it, there, his style just varies from poem to poem, the words sometimes he would write them backwards. It would just be like this really odd thing, but this odd and strange thing was really like accepted and loved. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, right? You don't have to be like everyone else is basically what he told me in the book, right? This collection of thoughts and imagination and wonder in a weird way that was yeah. his way and everyone loved him for it so yeah. and i think what you're doing is carrying that not the poetry as far as written but what you're doing is carrying that on as far as putting your you know, the potential to put your own style on what you're creating yeah this is how i gotta write you know everything's gotta be grammatically correct it's yeah it doesn't have to be that way so that's cool so and what are you reading currently i know you always got books out Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I, I just bought a new book on um, another drumming book. Uh, I'm continuing with my Burning Bright book, more Reiki. So I'm kind of like brushing up on more of the, like kind of solidifying what's going on. I got three new books that came in the mail, um, more about actually Native American rituals and things like that. So just a bunch of stuff. Very cool. Now in your, in your future, is there a potential which I don't know what goes into becoming one, but being, actually becoming a shaman. Oh yeah, there are there is a certification for that. So I've been looking into and trying to see what shamans are kind of calling to me. I I've checked a couple out. I haven't really got that vibe yet, so I will continue my search. Yeah. But that's definitely out there. So that'd be, cool. <laughs> that'd be awesome. What would you say? Uh, I'll ask you one more. If we ask your your you know, Joe, we asked your best friends, what's your superpower is? What would they say? Superpower? Oh my gosh. I don't know what my superpower is. What do you think Susie would say? Oh my gosh. Um, it's funny. <laughs> I guess I, because I know whenever I help her problem solve, like my superpower would be to I love helping my friends. I love helping my family. I just do things without being, I don't know. Like, I know, sorry, I, I can't think of it. But when I help her and I do the, like the laundry, I know she like emotionally is connected to the laundry, the closet, the cleanliness. Like she is like so like in it. I can walk in there and I just separate her from the emotion. I'm like, hey, so it isn't a big deal. We're just gonna take this one step thing. I can help you with this. I kind of like categorize things and just like get it done. I don't know what the superpower is. Yeah, I don't know how to, how to word it. I mean, obviously, you're very compassionate and selfless, but it's almost like you are, if I look at a superhero, like where you can almost hit him with the beam to slow things down. Yeah. You know, all down. Right? Things down, get things done. Yes, yeah, slow it down, get it down, you know, get out of your own head. 
Yeah. Try. Yeah. And it was funny, you know, when I broke up with Dev in 2010, I remember I went over to your house and you helped me, you know, a few times, you helped me work through it. Um, yeah, but that, that's, that's cool. So I'm super excited for everything you're doing. Obviously we'll have you continue to have you on as, as you continue to uh, go down your journey, yeah. you know. So this Thursday is at Hillsborough Newell Strength at 7.30. Hillsborough, yep go just shoot me or yt a message and what's the best way right now for somebody to get in touch with you um, i have a new email address it's restorative dot rituals r-i-t-u-a-l-z at gmail.com so if you want to email me we can talk reiki sound healing massage um, but definitely if you want to come on thursday that'd be really cool to see you um, anyone who's interested again it's just an opportunity for us to get together. It's my hope to just give you that time and space to connect with yourself and just be around other positive, like-minded people, right? And we're all trying to sit there and just raise our vibrations. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I'm proud of you for doing that Thursday because it, it's so easy, guys, for people to, right? That we, we talked about, like a lot of people wait till everything's perfect. You know, wait till all the lights are green. Mm -hmm. That's not the way the world works. So you're doing this and then, yeah, I remember, I think we were, when we were talking about this, giving talks where there's one or two people. It doesn't matter. You know, you start and then all of a sudden, boom, you yeah. know, and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome to continue to. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast and all your tests, all the challenges, all the roadblocks that you think are ahead of you are actually little doorways of you taking that step closer to your true self. Yeah. So you have to do it to know if this aligns with what you want in your life. And then that's how you can figure it out. Because if you keep pushing things away, like I was kind of pushing away this little conversation, like, right? You got to try it. You got to try it. And it, it's, you know, I knew, you know, it's funny because you feed off each other, but I know, you know, I'm very persistent and I wasn't going to let you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it, <laughs> just like you said too, when you, when you decided to go to uh, massage school. Yeah. COVID hit. It would have been very easy for, I'm sure a lot of people probably did do that. Ah, timing's not right. I'm just going to wait. Right. Oh, that's a test. Okay, you're going to step through that doorway? Okay, now the next thing. Yep. Everything just opens up, so everything just kind of opens. Every step you take, it's really important. Yeah. Any, any words of, parting words of wisdom, YT? I call it YT too, guys, just so, you, yeah. Parting words of wisdom? Um, just make sure that you guys all take the time to enjoy and just to be right. Yeah. Just be. Be. Simple, but hard to do for a lot of people, but that's good. And yeah. smile more. <laughs> Let me just stop the recording here.